When using the laser to apply graphics on prints made with certain filaments, we noticed that we were sometimes getting inconsistent and uneven results when using the engrave setting. Parts of the design were printing darker and a little blotchy. The phenomenon seemed to be happening with designs incorporating varying widths, with the narrower areas coming out darker as the laser rasterizes from top to bottom. We thought we might be able to do a second pass on just those areas where the rendering was substandard to even them out. But running the laser again over those areas either had no effect or made them even worse. So we decided it was probably time for a thorough test. First, we needed to confirm our theory that variable widths in the design had a bearing on the effect. A simple triangle that gradually tapered from wider to narrower would give us the answer. We set up three. The first with the same settings we had been using on our most recent project. The second with a faster speed. And the third with the raster set to unidirectional instead of bidirectional. The second test was to find out if the configuration of the SVG vector file made a difference. One was set up with many objects arranged as a unified compound shape, which the engraving software would rasterize as if it were a single shape, with each pass of the laser spanning the entire width of the design as it passed from top to bottom. The other was set up with each element as a separate shape, prompting the software to render each element one at a time. The third test was a series where we modulated three different variables, speed, lines per centimeter, and also power, in three separate sequences. First off, yes, raster width has an effect on the issue, apparent in both the triangle tests, as well as the comparison between the compound SVG versus the SVG configured as separate shapes. In fact, the narrowest part of the initial control triangle was essentially burned and melted. Too much power for too long of a duration in the same area on the surface of the piece. This is reinforced by our findings in the second test. The final bottom square of the compound SVG was the darkest and also showed signs of melting. And it makes sense that all separate shapes in the other SVG configuration look the same as the bottom square in the compound shape. The third test essentially establishes the stable working parameters for the IR laser on this filament. Either the power should be set at 100 and the speed set at 1000, or the power is set at 50 and the speed at 200. There are probably other equivalent modulation ratios in between, but these two are confirmed. We also did a second set of tests on an additional plate. These tests modulated speed while keeping power constant at 100. The intent was to see if there was a speed setting that allowed the quality of the applied graphics to be unaffected by changes in rasterization width. These tests confirm that at power 100 and speed 1000, graphic application remained consistent for this filament. Then it was time to apply what we learned, to see if we can address the issue we identified in the beginning. Taking the result of where we ended up and comparing it to an early example, we can see the improvement in the consistency of the markings. Keep in mind that different filaments respond in very different ways to the same settings. For example, this dark brown PLA has a much different sweet spot than the black PLA we've used for most of this test. The brown looking like it's responding better to slower speeds and slightly higher power, but never achieving the crisp contrast that the black does. This principle is also precisely why merely scaling a design up or down can drastically change the way the laser renders the same file on the same material. So testing at the same size on the same material is ideal. These test files are specific to the Xtool F1, so they likely won't be compatible with other types of machines, but we'll make them available on the batch site in case anyone might find them useful as a starting point. If you're still having issues with overburn banding on the narrower parts of your design, there is one more thing you can try. As mentioned before, when the laser moves from a wider portion of the design to a narrower one, it has a higher chance of more quickly heating up that smaller area. If you add a thin bar on either side of your design that are equal in height to your design, it will effectively force the Galvo mirror to rotate the same amount. 
making those raster lines equal in width as it progresses down the design. But you'll have to remember to place those lines far enough from your design so that they fall onto the bed and are not etched into your piece as well. If it is viable for your project, this technique should hopefully address any remaining issues you have with any specific sections being excessively heated by laser contact when using the engraving mode. It's important to note that we're using an X-Tool F1 here, which has a galvanometer, or galvo laser head, capable of much higher speeds than most flatbed gantry lasers. If you're using a flatbed laser, you may opt to modulate laser power if you've reached the optimal limit of your machine's speed. One last thing to bring up on the topic seems obvious, but can easily be forgotten or overlooked, at least it was for us, is making sure your optical elements are clean. Remember that just like cameras, lasers operate using light passing through lenses. And in the same way oil or dust on camera lenses degrade the quality of the image, debris or haze buildup on laser lenses can affect their performance. We had been getting some other gaps in the graphics, but after carefully cleaning the F1's field lens, the problem went away. Once you have a better understanding of how to modulate the contact of the laser on the filaments you often use, some additional possibilities will become available to you. Combining what we learned here with what we learned in the previous exercise, we've been able to both improve the quality and the sophistication of what we can achieve. While this video focused primarily on working through some challenges related to the engrave function in the laser software, you can see from this example piece that combining that with some elements using the score function can yield some pretty impressive results. Even though it's definitely not as straightforward or predictable as other processes, at least not yet, we can definitely see some potential in its application for anyone willing to put the time and modest investment into experimenting with materials they may plan on using for a project. For anyone that wants to try this themselves, there's a link to a write-up of this project in the description. You should be able to find the print models and engraving files via that link as well. Let us know if anyone has any questions. Please remember that using lasers on synthetic materials always runs the risk of putting harmful chemicals into the air. So, before beginning, don't forget to ensure that you have proper ventilation and to use hoods and air filtration whenever possible. Thanks again for checking us out and watching. We've got some other things here at Batch that we're working through to get posted and out to you, so stay tuned for that. As always, please let us know your thoughts.